<laughs> from Rio, Rio. So, like, when this whole Ryan Lochte thing's out of control, <laughs> are you guys even aware of that stuff? We hear about it. We try <laughs> not to let it bother us, but... Mm. How much of the Olympics do you watch as an Olympian? We try to go and support everybody else. Like, they come in and check us out. But uh, it was kind of like whenever other things were going on, we had a meeting or we had a film session. But we, we did get to catch up. What was the best thing you saw not basketball-related? Did you go to an event you really had a good time at? Definitely the, the volleyball. Um, oh, volleyball's amazing. It is. Beach volleyball at that. It was, it was oh great. Oh, my gosh. I mean, the sport. The sport, <laughs> obviously. I will say this, though. Volleyball is the most underrated Olympic sport. The quality of the athletes is incredible. Can you, when you watch that, you think to yourself, aren't they exhausted? It's just so hard to move in sand that it's, I don't understand how they do it. And there's only two of them. With me, I'm, that ball goes over there. I'm going to just watch it. <laughs> and it's a point for the other team. Okay, so there's all sorts. You got the brothel story. You got the Ryan Lochte. You got the Cope solo, all this stuff. But when you're living over there, can we confirm the brothel story? I'm not bothered at all by it. You're not, you're not, not bothered by it? No, he I said that he had no problem with guys going to brothels. I lived in Nevada. If, you, if guys go to a brothel, what do I care? I mean, I don't, I, it was a mistake. Everybody left and went and got a drink at a real bar, which is completely fine with me. Um, and that, that's all it was. All right. You I'm weren't not, there, right? Who, me? Yeah. Nowhere to be seen. Not me. So. So, like, I think it's kind of, I mean, I don't mean to be dismissive, but I heard the story and I'm like, you're grown adults. It's not like you're a 19-year-old kid at Illinois. Yeah, we didn't have anybody that was 19. Yeah, so yeah, you ended right. up at a brothel and then you left. It was out. Who can tell the out. difference between Applebee's and a brothel? I can't. You they can't? It I mean, seriously. Wow. Who, who can tell the difference? Okay, so there was some criticism. Paul George came out, kind of took a little bit of a veiled shot at Coach K. There wasn't enough ball movement. Take me through the process. Of you know, you start the camp. You guys haven't played with each other. Mm -hmm. There's some veterans. There's young guys like you. It looks like when you turn on television, you just dominate everybody. Were there bad practices? Were there bad halves? Did you struggle ever? Uh, uh, definitely, we we started off slow a couple of games, but it's it's because there isn't a lot of practice time. You know, we're playing a game every other day. Um, you watch film, but when you put five guys on the floor, that's kind of like the man on their respective NBA team, it, it's, it's kind of tough because everybody has to take a, a step back. Sure. And it's, it's a different role for everybody, you know. But we, we eventually we caught on to it, and we, we understood what everybody was going to do, where everybody should have been on the floor. And before you know it, we were, we were winning games. Well, I was saying that it was a very offensive team. You're all very talented. Then Draymond Green, who's known for defense, he sort of got left out a little. And somebody always on every Olympic team doesn't get the ball. Could you feel like Draymond Green at one point kind of felt like the lost guy on this roster? Him, myself, I think a, a lot of people because everybody's role is, is so different. And I think DeMar DeRozan, he said it best. He was like, yo, we had this for two more weeks. And everybody gets to go put their, you know, Superman outfit on, which is like for me as a Chicago Bulls jersey, for him as Toronto Raptors, for Draymond, Golden State, you know, you got to put all that to the side. And we, we had one goal, that's to win gold and everybody um, did what they're supposed to do and, and we accomplished it. So arguably of the, uh, we live in a planet with, a, you know, five, six billion people, whatever, and, and 12 of the best basketball players in the world are all in one team, one locker room, uh, one dinner table every night. Um, like this is a simplistic question, but what were practices like? I know I saw the games, but what is it like to practice when you have to guard Carmelo? Like every player's an all-star. I have to guard all those guys during the regular season, by the way. But um, it's practice is different because you, you go through some plays, you scout the other team, and then it's kind of like now you do your individual work. You know, what are you going to do in the game? And Coach K was so great at that. You know, he let guys take care of their bodies, lift, run on the field, um, get lots of shots up because I think that's what's going to translate to the game. When you put five really good players on the court at one time, go put the ball in the basket. That's basically what Coach K was telling us to Were do. Were you uh, segueing back to, to Rio? There was the Zika virus. There was the scares about security. You guys stayed, I think, on a boat at one point. I mean, when, when you are – in a place like Rio, there's security everywhere. We know there's great poverty in Brazil. Was, was there ever a moment you were out, looked around, and went, wow, this, I don't feel safe? Not at all. I think it's only as bad as you make it. If you think about it all the time, 
of course you're putting yourself in that situation, but that's like anywhere that I always say, there's bad parts of LA, there's bad parts of Houston, Chicago. If you don't go there, you don't have anything to worry about. Go yeah. where you're supposed to go. Um, did you, would you go again? How, go? how do you compare the Olympics to the NBA? NBA is a long grind. Did you enjoy the experience? Oh, of course I enjoy the experience. Uh, I mean, being one of the best players in the world, like you're on the Olympic team for the U.S. Like, So you get caught up in that? Oh, I mean, you, you have to. You know, like that's a milestone everybody wants to reach. Like there are kids out there right now that are saying, I want to be – on that Olympic team. Like, it's, it's hard to do. It's hard to make. But it just shows where you are in your career whenever you do play for the Olympics. Did you ever, during your struggles, like, have you surpassed your goals? No. I got a, mm -hmm. a lot more goals that I want to have reached. That wasn't That's disrespectful, was it? No, no, no. No, no, no. You're, you're, I mean, you're my guy. You're my guy. Anybody Aww. else? <laughs> you? But, I mean, seriously. What are your other goals? You're playing for the country. I mean, my main goal... I really do want to win an NBA championship. That is number no, one. No, that, that's I have no problem. If I was a player, that would it sounds disrespectful, but I totally get if I live in Chicago, I walk the streets with the fans. Mm -hmm. Like I, I totally get the NBA championship being bigger for Jordan than the Olympics. I'm not. I don't think that. But it's very. You you guys have to be careful saying that, right? Yeah, to to an extent. But I mean, just a, a NBA championship. I think of I think of it like this. We had the 12 arguably best players in the world, yeah. okay? In my eyes, we're supposed to dominate. We, we got close on some games, but I think we're supposed to win. I th every, okay, put it like this. Everybody that played against the U.S., we want to beat those guys because they're supposedly the best players in the world. You're like the Lakers with Magic. You're, you, they were supposed to win. Yeah, it, or the Bulls with Jordan. Yeah, you're supposed <laughs> to win. Or the Bulls with Jordan. Sure. Um, so now you, you separate everybody and you put them on NBA teams. So now it's the Bulls versus the Golden State Warriors or the New York Knicks right. or whoever it is. So now you, you, it's those good players against another team's good players. And now you're battling in a, a seven-game series. You have multiple chances. That is, you know that you're a really good player. You're the best team when you win a seven-game series against somebody. So uh, international basketball, do those guys talk trash? Does a Lithuanian guard come up? Hey, Jimmy Butler... You don't got game. They don't talk trash, do they? Not to me, you don't. No, <laughs> I'm not the one. But to be said, I think it, it's, it's a different game. Hard fouls, and you got to learn to keep your cool. So, you know, Coach, Coach K showed a, a video um, of, like, how you would get fouled to stop a fast break. Why is that? Why, why is international basketball harder fouls? I don't, I don't know. But they foul hard. And then he showed – my favorite clip was somebody somebody fouled um, DeMarcus Boogie really hard on, like, a free throw. And his first instinct was one of these. And it was just like, well, tech. Because they know you can get underneath our skin a little bit, maybe. But for, for some guys, we don't – they don't like – So not much. a lot of trash talking internationally? Not, not much. I mean, why? I mean, we don't have anything <laughs> to prove to them. We already think – that we're the best in the most humble way possible. But we have the, the best 12 guys. I don't think there's too much to say about that. Are you a college football guy? Uh, you grew up in Texas, Tomball, Texas. Tomball. So, like, did you grow up a Longhorn fan? I did. I did grow so up So did you watch fan. the game this past weekend? I watched part of it. The only reason that I stopped being a Longhorn fan is because they didn't recruit me. So I don't, I don't watch them. So you're kind of bitter about that? Very much so bitter, yeah. I love that you admit that. Oh, of course. I'd tell anybody that. You were bitter, like you, they didn't. Oh, like I had a lot Like, of... tell me how bitter. Like, you're looking at me like bitter, Beep. bitter. Yeah, if I was to start talking, you'd have so to they, you it just out. You thought it was total disrespect. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't that good whenever I was in, in high school, but I think after junior college, so many teams wanted me in the nation, but UT never did. So Rick I Rick Barnes. Yeah. Oh, I know his name. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I know that guy's name. Have you talked to him since? No, I haven't. It's okay, though. I'm in a, you know, I like Marquette. It was great for me. So what are you going to do tonight in L.A.? Okay. Tonight in well, L.A.? I mean, I'm interested. I mean, look at you. <laughs> You're the kind of guy, isn't it kind of discouraging? You're the kind of guy that puts T-shirts and a worn jeans on, and you just look cool. 
Really? Yeah, like you could, I mean, you just look, you know, one of those guys, like a lot of times a guy comes on and he's an athlete and he's got like, he's fat or something. And I, I don't want to say anything to him, <clears> but like you come on and you have, you look good in it. And I'm, that's a weird topic, right? But you're like a dude. Are you into clothes? Yeah, a it's little bit. But, shirt. Yeah, like, but this is my logo. That's yeah. why I, I kind of wear it everywhere. Like, like so last you, time I was here, I had on this yeah, logo, but yes. in a different style. So what are you doing in L.A. tonight? Dinner with my guys, play some dominoes, gamble a little bit. Oh, really? Yeah. Where yeah, are you going to dinner? Don't... Probably at the house. We order oh. out and have it here a, a yeah, lot of the time. Yeah, we're, we're lame, to tell you the truth. Me and, my, me and my crew, we don't do too much. Really? Yeah. I'm sorry if I disappointed you, but... You kind of did. What, what, what do you want to hear? I'll tell you whatever you want to hear. No, I was, I was going to be like, uh, raise the roof, party time. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to the brothel, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> When he Domino, was in Rio, he was, was like, playing football with Clay Thompson. He was being such a good guy. I was playing football. Clay's wow. a good dude, right? Yeah, I love Clay. How close could you get to players knowing there'll be your rivals? You, you always got something in common at, at, at that <clears throat> point in time. But um, you, you have to gain respect and you get close to them because you're around them so mm -hmm. much. Like, those are your friends. Those are the only people that you talk to. We're on a boat. <clears throat> I had no choice but to talk to all of those guys. Was Clay your best friend there? Probably not, but... <laughs> I would Who, was? Have, I, Who was? Probably DJ, DeAndre, only because we're both from the Houston area, and um, his hair is probably nappier than mine. DJ got <laughs> some on. really bad hair, but um, I don't know. I found myself around him a lot of the time. Yeah. Good for you guys. Congrats, man. Good seeing you. Thank you. You're always welcome here. Really? Well, Can I know. sit in your chair next time? No, slow down there. All right. <laughs> this bad, is the emperor's chair here. No Jimmy. one gets to sit in Colin's chair. Yeah, it's kind of a big deal. Jimmy Butler. Good seeing you, man. The Herd. Thank you.